Anyway, we watched Cocaine Bear. Julian, would you like to take the lead? Yeah, for sure. Uh, this movie was a really fun ride. It was hilarious. Uh, if you saw the trailer, it perfectly describes the feeling of the movie. So uh, good job to the marketing team. I know a lot of times they just fucking shit the bed. Um, they, they, they mess up a lot of the times in marketing teams. They didn't this time. Um, it had a great cast. Uh, really, really great cast. Uh, there's a lot of heart to it. And, yes. Uh, so okay. So that was the thing. So kind of look. There's always going to be spoilers when we do these things. Yeah. So just we, just we, know should, that. we should probably just call the show "Beware Spoilers." But, yeah. <laughs> but we're not going to do that. As we were watching, I was like, "Whose movie is it?" Because yeah. they all have the same plot goal. Well, I mean, they don't all have the same plot goal. You've got three different storylines. You got the yeah. You got the uh, the criminals, the criminals, the detective, and then the mom looking for her kid. Yep. Oh, but there's also the park rangers. But they were just kind of there to be killed. Yeah. Um, but they, but they, but I'm gonna say they actually fall with um, what's uh, what's Felicity's name. Oh, uh, I don't know, actually. I don't know any of their names, I'll be honest. Okay. <laughs> Julian's going to splice this in an editing. Yeah. The one who played Felicity and in The Americans, mm-hmm. I'm going to put the Park Ranger storyline with her storyline. Yeah, that would make sense. Because, because we they... needed them to, to express the danger to her mm-hmm. in order to find, you know, to up the stakes for her trying to find her daughter. Yeah. We had these three, so... Ultimately, so the the cop, or the detective, and the criminals have a plot goal: find the yep. find the cocaine. She has a plot goal: find her thing. Um, Aiden Ulrich, Aldrich, Aldrich, Aldenrich. Yeah. I'll, I, I'll, we'll put it in the bottom there. Young Han Solo. Um, he was, uh, I think he was the heart of the, like, he was the real heart of the movie. because. Well, that's just it. I um, I was going to say, I think it was his movie. Yeah. It was. Whereas. Um, Our protagonist was the mother. Yeah. Felicity. Yes. He was the the actual, the heart of the movie, the emotional yep. core. She, well, she, but she's also mirror to the cocaine bear. Because, look, mm-hmm. the cocaine bear. Because here's the thing: the cocaine bear isn't the antagonist. No, it's not. The, the cocaine bear is a victim of Ray Liotta. Just like they're all, they're all victims of Ray Liotta. Yeah. Um, you know what the worst part? Is? I'm gonna remember her name as soon as we start. As soon as we finish recording. <laughs> I gotta tell you though, part like for, through like I was along for the ride, yeah, for most of it, but I like I wasn't super into it, but I wasn't super not into it. It was kind of, I kind of had the same feeling as Ant Man. Yeah, for most of it, it was fine until you caught the feels at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and the the they're at the the waterfall, and the, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, everything's kind of culminated to this moment. Um, I, I'll be honest with the Ray Liotta thing. I, th- I think he wasn't in it enough to warrant being the villain. Mm-hmm. Like he was clearly the villain because it's his cocaine. He's a shitty father to, mm-hmm. uh, Han Solo. Um, but I, I just felt like he was in the beginning and then he kind I, of jumps in after the midpoint. I had actually forgotten about him until I, he showed up. I did too. I suspected there was a quick mm. pickup shot of a guy pick, opening the trunk, getting um, a gun, mm, yeah. and I, I thought, okay, that's probably him, which it, it ended up being him. Yeah. But he wasn't in it enough uh, to um, warrant mm-hmm. the emotional end there. Yeah. Um, which it, but that's okay. The 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 fun of the movie was the weird, spectacular moments with the cocaine yeah. bear. 
no, 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 don't eat that, don't eat that. Let's see what kind of effect that has on the bear. The bear. Yeah, it was a little uneven in that sense because they introduced Ray Liotta. They because t- they talk about him. Yeah. They introduce him. You see him, and then you don't see him for for a long time. Um, like an hour, I think. Yeah, like, the, the bulk of the movie till he yeah. till he shows up, but it still works because he was introduced earlier. Yeah. If you never yeah. say, and this is the whole thing, and this is a conversation you can hear on our podcast, uh, Adventures in Filmmaking, a lot. Um, sometimes movies aren't appropriately set up, mm-hmm. and you don't have to actually see a character in the first act as long as they're mentioned. Mm-hmm. You need to set up all your characters, all your primary characters, excuse me, in the first act. Yeah. Secondary characters you can meet along the way. Uh, yeah. Tertiary, and then you, there's a whole other, other conversation with tertiary characters. So everyone was set up and met. I do like that the order mm-hmm. was done in such a way that you weren't, you're not quite sure whose story it is. Yeah, I was scratching my head for uh, till the midpoint, mm-hmm. uh, and then I kind of figured out that the anchor character was uh, Han Solo. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it 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 almost felt like and and there's two names that came up in the credits was Phil Lord and Chris Miller. Um, yeah, I heard you mention that. Yeah, so they they did uh, 21 and 22 Jump Streets. They did a really hilarious uh, show called Clone High. Read this. <clears throat> For supper, I want a party platter. No, no, no! Like this! For a supper, I uh, want a party platter! But they also did a whole bunch of, basically they're co- comedic directors. Um, and it really felt like a bunch of skits, this movie. Like, I, I really felt like mm. the, these like these scenes with the bear were contained to their areas and then they would move on to another area. Mm. And it really felt like a bunch of skits with the bear, uh, yeah. <laughs> which I was really, really enjoying. Like I was laughing almost consistently throughout the entire movie. Just oh. like, okay. I actually, I started. Yeah. No, no, no. The, um, wasn't the park ranger. It was, uh, the guy who showed up, whatever his job was. Like he was a supervisor <laughs> or district manager or whatever. You're safe. Bears can't climb trees. Of course I can. Yeah. But it was, uh, I want to say, Jesse from uh, Modern Family. Oh, it, really, eh? Yeah. Okay. The, 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 uh, it was, Je- was it Jesse and Cam who were married? I might have the name wrong. Once mm-hmm. again, Julian's going to pop it in I'll here. I'll pop it in, yeah. Um, but he was, he was one of the best parts. He was hilarious. He was only in for like maybe 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, no, but he he was hilarious. He was, yeah, very, very good. But the... when the... <laughs> the park ranger calls Henry little girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a little moment that I had. Yeah, I thought that was funny. Uh, the humor felt, uh, quirky isn't the right word. Um, like, it almost felt dry, like, um, I don't know if you've seen Fargo. Yeah, we both did. She went to college, too. I went to Normandale for about a year and a half. Yeah, that's where we met. But I dropped out, though. Yeah, she dropped. Yeah. So where are you girls from? Chaska, Lesueur. But I went to high school in White Bear Lake. Go Bears. I kind of, I, I Wikipedia'd it. Wikipedia'd? Mm-hmm. Wikipedia'd? Wikipedia'd it. <laughs> um, I guess he was a former drug enforcement agent who turned into a drug runner. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so this whole thing where a bear got into cocaine happened. Now, there's, no one got killed by the bear in real life. <laughs> um so the, the the inspiration for the story exists in the in the time frame as as mm-hmm. portrayed. Um, but I think the humor only works if you keep it. You can only ramp up the ridiculousness at certain points. Yeah, like the midpoint. Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with that bear? Shoot it, man! Bear speeder! Higher, baby, and don't ever come down. Yeah, which was excellent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you knew it was coming, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you had to play it straight, which the actors did great. You had to play it straight for this whole thing to work. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it, it's, uh, it was good. I mean, it was, so it's, it's a, uh, I think it's billed as a horror comedy. Yeah. And it, it, it pretty much, that's exactly what it is. I w- not really horror. It's just straight comedy, though. 
Like I, I felt like the the ridiculousness I, and the brutality was hilarious. Because well, in that case, I would describe it more as comedy slasher. Yeah. No. Exactly. Because yeah, yeah. It, 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 the bear functionally serves as stab. Yep. Yeah. No. Exactly. Uh, it was. It was just, and the the moments with the bear get more and more and more ridiculous, and <laughs> the bear starts almost acting cartoonishly, like. Like uh, when uh, it just kind of passes out on on Han Solo, <laughs> and uh, then the the mm-hmm. bag of cocaine drops, mm-hmm. and then it wakes up because it smells mm-hmm. the cocaine. The um uh so so let me just uh, kind of take a little aside here and say we approach this show from a practical standpoint in our collective understanding of storytelling, mm-hmm. storytelling structured character arc whatnot. So. As much as sometimes emotions are always going to be involved in whether you like or dislike something, we tend to approach it from an analytical mm-hmm. point of view. So we're looking at, are all the things there in the right order as they should be? Um, so having said that, um, come back to whose story is it? Is it's Han Solo, or Aiden, whatever his name is. Yeah, no, um, it is his because, story. Because he has the most to learn in that he is very... He's disconnected. His, I'm guessing, wife died. I don't know. If they said wife, wife or girlfriend. His wife died of cancer. He doesn't trust his dad. He even there was a line where he even thinks that his dad might have given her something to. Yeah, exactly. Get, have the uh, the cancer. Yeah. So he's and and he's left. He's abandoned his son. Yeah. To his father. Yeah. And in the end, you know, he he's achieved synthesis. He accepts that. His father's a, maybe he always said to his father was a bad yeah. a bad guy. Although his father's motivations were explained. Yep. Uh, because, because he needs to get the cocaine yeah. to because then that family's not going to be safe mm-hmm. if he doesn't recur all the money that would have come from the cocaine uh, being sold. So he like, yeah. needs to protect his family. All the characters, they were like some movies. You have multiple characters that really feel like the same person. Yeah. But in this, they all had like their own caricatures. Like mm-hmm. he was done with everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, Han Solo was sad for most of the movie and um, almost apathetic. Yeah. Um, and then you have the mother character Felicity, mm-hmm. who's looking for her daughter. Um, yeah, because she's she's active the whole movie. She is active the whole movie. Um, no, it, 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 the characters were great. The hilarity of, again, I feel like it was almost like skits with the, the bear. That was mm-hmm. great. Uh, cause that, if mm-hmm. it wasn't as funny as it was, it probably would have not been a very good mm-hmm. movie at all. Yeah. Well, exactly. It, it's, it's, it's such a fine line and look at just a, you know, wonderful job to the entire team mm-hmm. to take a ridiculous con- concept and make it fun, enjoyable, and like I said, having having heart with it. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about um, I want to talk about prologue. It opens up. We have the music, so we know we're in the. We automatically assume we're in the '80s, and mm-hmm. then we see the, how the guy's dressed and his hairstyle and facial hairstyle. Yeah, and he's throwing packages <laughs> of the plane, um, and he's clearly high. And then he goes to jump out of the plane and smashes his head on, and he, on the door frame, <laughs> and then and it falls, falls out of the plane. Yeah. <laughs> so we have established the feel, the feel, yeah, the tone, the feel, the time period, yeah. <laughs> of 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 where where you are yeah and that's why that those first few minutes are super super important really really important yeah. um and it tells uh, the audience everything they need to know about what they're in for so there was a kind of a problem that i had with the film uh not a not a problem with the film as a whole but just the way they set up the characters it just kind of didn't mesh well mm-hmm. so they're at the gazebo the cop had thrown uh, a brick of cocaine to distract the bear to get the, let them run away. Mm-hmm. And they have a chance, and uh, Ice Cube's son just pulls his gun out on the cop again, and I get that he understands the importance of getting the cocaine. I get that. Mm. But we've already established how dangerous the bear is, and it's like 
that trumps any, you know, reason why he's there. So I had a kind of like, I was kind of, it dropped my interest a little Mm. bit in the movie because it had been pretty bulletproof until Mm. that point. I uh, I will agree with you. It, it seemed a bit odd, but as, yeah. but now that you've been saying it, I feel like because even Ice Cube's son has mm-hmm. a has a small arc because he's getting he's getting further and further away from Sid's influence yes. during this experience. With, no, it's true. But when this happens, he's not there yet. When they're all heading, so the the mother and the the kids had were already in the cave, and then we kind of show yeah the storylines are started. This is where the storylines are converging. Um, but uh, the criminals, we'll call them, uh, have already met up with Ray Liotta, and they're heading into the cave, mm. and they say this thing like, you remember what happened to the hiker? And then it splashes back to literally maybe less than a minute ago when it's like right outside, mm. clearly right outside the cave, and it's like, why, mm-hmm. didn't, why didn't you just show them running, hit, I running thought, into that? I, I thought about that. So this is the... This is the this is the same guy from the the first scene after the uh, after the after he throws the yep is the 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 foreign gentleman with the big with the big red beard yeah because he guides Felicity to the bear's cave yeah um but he dies off screen and we get that flashback yeah and yeah I heard you say something beside me and I I thought about it but I was very quickly I'm like either they didn't like the footage didn't get the footage or yeah. they need to cut it for pacing. Probably that's the case. Um, so, but it is a little jarring. It was a little jarring, yeah, because it was it was it was like clearly two seconds ago, mm. like yeah, exactly outside yeah, it, the it, cave. Yeah, it, it's it's almost <laughs> like doing a, a clip show for your second episode. Yeah, like you, I mean, <laughs> obviously, I think that's probably what mm-hmm. happened. Um, but I mean, still, that's the biggest complaint. Like that's yeah. I also had a problem with Ray Liotta uh, in the end. How they're they're on a cliff like at the the waterfall uh the the he's being cruel to the little the, cubs, yeah, the cubs, yeah. which is fine for his character i get that but when the big bear shows up he's still obsessed with getting the cocaine and mm. i know that that's his flaw i know that he that is like yeah, he's, he's afraid he, he, yeah exactly he's afraid of dying from the people that he works for but it's like Dude, there's a fucking bear there. <laughs> like you are a hundred percent dying from the bear. I it just it it felt like again maybe if they had of uh, had him throughout the movie mm-hmm. and maybe they did shoot stuff other stuff yeah. with him and they cut it. But I I feel like it, it didn't kind of connect the way that they wanted it to. Mm-hmm. Uh, other than that, I mean, like, look, the movie is still hilarious. You, the audience gets mm-hmm. pushed through the movie because of how how funny it is yeah and how insane it gets like there's a slow motion shot where the bear is like jumping like matrix style yeah. into the exactly the exactly. I, I, I'm, that, that was actually in the trailer yeah exactly <laughs> yeah yeah no but it's like uh, that moment speaking of tiktok guy yeah we gotta you get to put a figure who it is put it yeah here um he was very good as one of the paramedics yeah yeah he was great Again, that was like a little skit. Mm. Like it was like a little skit that ends with the the huge scene mm. where they're trying to drive away. Yeah, which that was the midpoint, right? Yeah. like that huge moment. Yeah, yeah. the um, um, yeah. I was kind of waiting for, it, and then things were getting set up. I'm like, okay, yeah, we're we're there. Yeah, and so look at anyone who's watched this regular. So this is our third episode. We'll have talked about the midpoint in every single one. Mm-hmm. Midpoint is super important um, because it's it's your it's your generally your big action beat. Right in the middle, yeah. And from an act perspective, it's where your characters go from reacting to the situation they're faced with to being much more active in pursuing their plot goals. Yeah, because uh, they've learned lessons throughout throughout everything leading up to leading up to the midpoint. Yeah. So the midpoint tends to be your big action set piece. Your, in this case, action and comedy. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and and you know blood and gore and whatnot. Um, so where 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 all about the midpoint? Yeah, I really I don't really have much to say beyond the things we talked about because it's yeah. like that the pacing is wonderful. Yeah, I mean I think the general consensus already is that it's a, it's a solid movie, it's an entertaining yep. thing. So I mean we're really just adding to that with just kind yeah. of our our analysis of, of things we liked and things uh, and the like the the minor minor things that I can't even yeah. say disliked. I'll say this is 
it's a great theater experience. Yeah, like the, the, yeah, the audience, the audience was into it. Was really, really into it. Yeah. Uh, it, even for that experience alone, like I, I don't usually like packed theaters, but I like packed theaters for horror films and for films like this, mm-hmm. like comedies, because yeah, the if the audience is really into mm-hmm. it, there's nothing quite like that. Like, you know, reacting with the audience. Yeah. And so, if you like good at theater experiences, this is one of them. Um. No, it, it's. Mm-hmm. What else do I say? It's great. It's great. It's fun. We it's can... enjoyable. Um, so I hope you like this episode. Come back next week for.